Curious about voting? Stay on 702. In 1994, when we had our first general elections, I couldn't vote because I missed it by a year. I was 17. And that was also the year where I matriculated. And I went with my mother. If I had gone with my grandmother, I know we would have been cut to the front, but I went with my mother instead. And we had to stand in line. And people were patient. That moment was so profound for her that she just wanted to sit with it, sit with the feeling of knowing that She's just cast her vote as a woman in her, what, late 30s? For the very first time in the country of her birth. Living in Pimville in Soweto, we'd seen a lot of violence. We'd seen a lot of violence between Makomrit, that's what we used to call them growing up, and some of the hostile dwellers. We lost a lot of um, friends who were my brother's age, because he's eight years older than me, so he was in his 20s at the time. But young men who would literally, in the evenings, would leave their homes to defend the neighborhood from people who were attacking from the hostels but that were close by. So it did come as well with a lot of a sense of tragedy because there'd been so many lives lost unnecessarily. And it makes you appreciate even more this transition, the transition that we went through, but also that it was a peaceful one and that here we are sitting today as a democratic country. You know, when it comes to these elections, I'm literally tense. It's like holding your breath and just waiting for that moment to exhale. So I'm looking forward to the moment of exhale. And even then, there's a lot of uncertainty about what that would look like. There's a lot of tension at the moment. There are a lot of unknown factors, a lot of unpredictability um, as far as people, the lengths to which they're willing to go. This is a week in which we're seeing a lot of protests. Almost every day there's been a major protest. And you wonder about what could happen depending on the results of that vote. Um, you wonder if we will have free and fair elections, if they will be free of vote rigging, for instance, or if we'll be free of violence because people don't simply want to accept the results of the elections and whether or not people will behave morally and ethically because they believe that there's a lot at stake and they, what's at stake for them and what's at stake for this country, the reality is that that may be two different things. People want to safeguard their careers, but what's most important is that we safeguard this country and do what is right for South Africa. And I think some of the leaders that we have at the moment seem to have certainly forgotten that. It's about self-gain and not necessarily about what's of importance and what would be beneficial for South Africa. To make sense of how this election can transform the country, stay on 702 for the curious.